and and so it's really um, great that um, people are here. Um, we're going to have a really interesting speaker, Professor Johan Muckenbach, uh, who's Professor of Public Health at Erasmus University in Rotterdam. And um, I know um, um, Johan from his time when um, I had a sabbatical there um, because of his work on inequalities. So. Um, He's, his prime interest in public health, or the area where I got to know him, not the prime interest, is in trying how to reduce uh, inequalities in health. But he also has an interest in medical demography and health services research. Um, he's very, a very distinguished author and uh, has been editor-in-chief of the European Journal of Public Health. And he's co coordinated a number of international comparative studies, not just within Europe, but now looking at inequalities with Europe across to America. Uh, apart from focusing on inequalities in health, um, he's particularly interested in broader determinants of health and what um, creates the inequalities, as well as what we can we do about it, and has increasingly, apart from those diverse interests, became, become very interested in what can be done at a city letter level. And of course, Erasmus University is um, right in the heart of Rotterdam, which is the um, largest port in the world, and the port from which people migrated from the whole of Europe across to the um, United States. So it's a particularly um, fitting um, that um, we should hear uh, today about um, Johan's work in relation to climate change, his work in relation to uh, cities, and um, the, the kind of work that he's been doing um, with the Rotterdam City Council, um, which has signed up to be one of Bill, um, Bill Clinton's cities um, that's going to try and reduce carbon emissions. Now, the format of these talks, these Centre for Sustainable Cities talks, um, that um, those of you who've been here before will recognise, is that first of all, our um, speaker, international speaker, is going to speak. And then we've got, very kindly, um, we've got Chris Cameron talking, who I'll introduce when he um, speaks after Johan. Uh, and then after they've both spoken, um, there's time for questions and comments afterwards. It's a very exciting area. I'm really pleased that um, public health has got a contribution to make in, to this broader area of climate change. And nice to see so many of you here tonight. OK, Johan, over to you. Thank you, Philippa, for introducing me and uh, giving me this opportunity to share some of our Dutch experiences with you. Um, don't expect a fairy tale of a country that is far ahead of New Zealand. Um, I think the Netherlands is struggling with these new issues of climate change and how it affects health and other matters as much as New Zealand is struggling with it. Uh, so I actually look forward to exchanging our experiences, but uh, I hope that some of the Dutch experiences can also provide uh, food for thought here in New Zealand. My presentation uh, will consist of three parts. Um, I will uh, start with a general introduction about the Netherlands and about climate change in the Netherlands, then move to the middle part of my presentation, which is focused on a report that we wrote for the Dutch government on how climate change is likely to affect population health in the Netherlands. And I will end with a final part uh, focusing on the policy response to climate change and climate change and population health. Um, but let's start with uh, a general introduction on the Netherlands, uh, perhaps with the most simple question of where the Netherlands actually is. I, I don't know how familiar you are with the geography of the Netherlands. Um, here is a satellite image of the country that clearly shows its proximity to the sea, which is uh, important not only in determining its climate, which is a, a sea climate, uh, quite a moderate uh, climate uh, with uh, average temperatures ranging between 0 and 20 degrees centigrade, a bit like New Zealand perhaps, uh, it's quite wet. The Netherlands is a very densely populated country. Uh, particularly here in the western part of the country um, and uh, as I said it's, uh, it's surrounded by sea and there are a number of very big rivers 
uh, through which uh, most of the rainwater that falls on Western Europe flows into the sea. And like other parts of the world, um, the Netherlands has experienced uh, global warming. This is the uh, temperature record of the Netherlands going back to the year 800. This has been reconstructed on the basis of archaeological and other findings. Uh, and as you see, there have been fluctuations in the average winter temperature in the Netherlands since that time, with colder and warmer periods um, following up on each other. But then since about 1800, uh, in the Netherlands, average winter temperature has gone up very substantially and has reached levels higher than ever before uh, in this record. And um, to be more specific about more recent developments in climate in the Netherlands, here are a number of features of climate change in the Netherlands during the 20th century. Uh, we've experienced global warming, but to a larger degree. Uh, the global average has gone up by 0.8. Percent um, in the Netherlands, the, the rate of increase of average yearly temperature has been. Um, th this should actually be degrees centigrade. Somehow this has been changed by PowerPoint into percentages. Um, so the, the average yearly temperature has gone up by more than twice the uh, increase observed worldwide. This has been associated with a gradual decline of very cold days in winter. And for some reason or other, the uh, increase of the number of very hot days has been limited to a more recent time period. And while temperature has changed, also other aspects of the climate have changed. Um, particularly the uh, yearly precipitation has gone up quite substantially, uh, not only in terms of the average precipitation on a yearly basis, but the intensity of rain showers has increased during winter. Uh, which has led to a uh, higher risk of flooding. And the sea level in front of the Dutch coast uh, that you saw on the previous slide has gone up by 20 centimeters over uh, this 20th century, uh, which leads to an increased risk of, of flooding, but more importantly, uh, peak flows of river uh, water have become more frequent uh, with risks of flooding from uh, the rivers, the big rivers flowing through the country. Um, and in the Netherlands, the awareness of climate change and how it has affected and is affecting the country has gradually increased. And one of the um, clearest signs of uh, climate change has been the uh, uh, rather reduced frequency with which ice skating is possible in the country. Um, you may know that we have a tradition of ice skating in the Netherlands and um, there is even uh, a famous uh, marathon on ice, a so-called 11 cities tour, a tour on ice along 11 set cities in the north of the country, the so-called Elfstedentocht, which uh, is, is very popular in the Netherlands, but uh, of which the frequency has gone down substantially over the last decades. And some people have even uh, used this 11 cities tour to construct new indicators of climate change in the Netherlands. Uh, this is a chart uh, depicting the um, 11 cities tours of the 20th century. Uh, there have been around 20 uh, during the course of this century and uh, they are only possible when the thickness of the ice in certain areas exceeds 20 centimeters. Um, the arrows indicate the uh, 11 cities tours which have been held during the 20th century and particularly during the last decades there have been only a few. The most recent one has been in 1997. No one has yet been observed in the 21st century uh, because of the uh, lower frequency with which this uh, thickness of ice has been <coughs> achieved. And the predictions for the 21st century is, are that the uh, probability of having an 11 cities tour 